Hello, once again, I'm Robert Shearer, training consultant for California Electrical Training, who are administering the acceptance test technician certification for the National Lighting Contractors Association of America. If you've come this far, then you are a glutton for punishment. Let's take a look at daylighting systems. Let's examine automatic daylighting systems, the most problematic systems for an acceptance test technician to test. Imagine we have an interior space with no windows or skylights. Let's find out how these things work. This is a closed loop system. A photocontroller has been installed to measure the general lighting level in the room and is capable of adjusting this illuminance. As the photocontroller senses the luminaire output in the room as feedback for controlling the luminaire output, this is a closed loop system. This arrangement allows an installer to set the lighting to a desired design illuminance level that is lower than full output from the luminaires. In other words, design full output. Under normal operating conditions, the lighting does not reach full output, so these luminaires are considered to be tuned. As the lamp's efficacy decreases with age, the luminaire lenses frost and yellow, and dust collects on the fixture, the photocontroller receives less feedback and corrects the system by increasing the power to the luminaires. Thus, the illuminance level in the area is kept constant as the power is gradually increased to the luminaires. This is automatic lumen maintenance using a closed loop photocontroller. If the photocontroller is trying to maintain a certain design illuminance in the area and can suddenly not see any feedback, the photocontroller will typically be expected to drive the lighting in the area to full output. If under normal operation the brick wall is suddenly replaced by a window admitting natural illuminance, the photocontroller can typically be expected to decrease the electric lighting in the room and this is what you call a closed loop daylighting system. Step door switched output daylighting systems are typically, and I'll say hopefully, open loop systems. In an open loop system, covering the sensor merely tells the system it is nighttime. An automatic daylighting system seeks to hold the room at design level, and it wants for the code to keep it above the true no daylight electric illuminance levels in a daylit area. Your controller is not allowed to take the lighting below the true 3 a.m. in the morning, only electric illuminance in the space level. It needs to track above that. Light meters are used to determine illuminance in an area, and while absolute readings in an area will differ from light meter to light meter, Relative readings should be similar for properly working light meters. In other words, the technician is taking basically before and after levels. If you get 40 different light meters and put them in the space, if they're from different manufacturers and whatnot, you're likely to read 40 different things. But the relative illuminance measurements taken for instance, before and after demand response during the full output test should be similar. Light meter readings should be taken with a pickup, the sensor window or lens, looking up. One of the first things an acceptance test technician will have to check on the daylighting acceptance form is whether or not the daylit zones are indicated on the plans. Surprise! It is a code requirement that daylit areas be shown on the plans. Let's try more 
absolutely unofficial and not legally binding definitions of lighting levels. When a commissioning agent sets up the lighting in an area, they will attempt to balance the illuminance in an area between general lighting luminaires controlled by different control schemes. This presumably will yield the design illuminance for an area. You may ignore my definition here of reference illuminance because this has become an item of contention between myself and several other people and I have no idea whether the reference illuminance and the design illuminance are the same or whether the reference illuminance should be taken with all other lighting in the area off excluding with the exception of the daylit zone under test I actually believe that I'm wrong here okay so just ignore this definition ah the acceptance test technician will be required to estimate or measure power reduction in a daylit zone this is not taken from design or reference illumination but in fact taken from full output or highest level foot candles is what the form entry says not necessarily the not necessarily the illuminance level under true no daylight conditions because the lights could have been tuned down from full output and it's very <laughs> the form is very unclear on these things uh, each daylit zone and or type in a non-residential function area must be tested independently that is true uh, there is a required test for each separate daylit zone that's how they're listed on the acceptance testing form this requirement is infirm inferred from that those entries on the acceptance testing form and uh, shown within a NA 7.6 of the reference appendices It is the author's opinion that the answer is yes, that you would want to consider each daylit zone to be a separate lighting function in the room. I'm going to tell you, if it's not going to kill you to put in area controls for the different uh, daylit zones in an area, you can consider them as a functional group and control them that way uh, because this would probably lead to better energy savings anyway from the non-residential compliance manual and this is not the law we have the following 13.8.1 NA 7.6.1 automatic daylighting control acceptance Charlie functional performance testing step 2 no daylight test quote when conducting this test the other lights in the space should be turned off. Simulate or provide conditions without daylight. Uh, that is out of the 2013 version of the non-residential compliance manual. And like I say, that is not the law. The manual is just meant to be helpful advice. Uh, but therefore, if this were correct, each daylit zone type tested individually with all other lighting turned off but it is unclear as to what they mean so sky lit primary side lit secondary side lit all do have to be checked separately but there is no overt code requiring separate area controls on off controls for these different day lit areas so that one is still up for grabs all the code states is separate controls doesn't say area controls so we're not really sure what they're after we also have a uh, definition of general lighting and it says it is exclusive of daylighting but there's no definition of daylighting so we don't really know what they're talking about are they talking about exclusive of natural light coming in the room that's a good bet or do they mean exclusive of other general lighting that is under the control of automatic daylighting controllers? We just don't know. 
So the author is not even going to hazard a definition here. Allow me to say, however, if one cannot energize general lighting in different daylit zones exclusive of all other lighting, the field technician is not going to be fond of you. Um, yeah, he may not need to do that. Like I say, this is up for grabs. I wish they had more definitions under the code. Uh, look on the bright side. Uh, no pun intended. Allowing the users of an area to energize lighting in different daylit zones independently might lead to voluntary energy savings when they only turn on those lights. Under no circumstances are you actually required to supply design illuminance levels on any of the compliance forms uh, in under the 2013 code. I don't believe there's any spot for it under the 2016 either. An acceptance test technician is actually better off if you don't supply design lighting level value. There is a slot for it on a portion of the automatic daylighting form, but it doesn't have to be filled out. Once again, an open loop daylighting system does not see the controlled lighting. This system simply sees the daylight outside and makes a quote guess unquote at where to set the interior illuminance. In a closed loop system, the sensor can see the contribution of its own controlled lighting. This is what closes the loop. The rules of daylighting are the illuminance in a daylit zone must not drop below its true no daylight electric illuminance value during operation, but the system should still reduce lighting during operation to meet the power reduction criteria stated by the state of California. Here are four different general lighting zones in an area with daylighting controls with illuminaires under separate controls. Here are what are considered to be the zones illuminated by these controlled luminaires. And these are the areas where an acceptance test technician will be placing his light meter somewhere in these four different zones to make his check. As well as checking to see that the daylight zones are marked on the plans or putting them there if they are not, a field technician is also supposed to verify that instruction and programming manuals are present on site or have been made available to the building owner. There is also a stipulation that sensor locations are shown on the plans, but this is not a pass fail in the author's opinion. In my opinion, if you put a no in light sensor shown on plans, it's still a pass on the form. The field technician makes a variety of tests to confirm daylighting system operation. First, the tech finds the electric illumination in a daylit zone under true no daylight conditions, the reference illumination. Second, the tech determines the full output illumination, known as highest light level foot candles on the form, or power draw. Third, the tech determines the electric illumination or power draw under full daylight conditions. And then finally, the tech determines the combined illumination under partial daylight conditions. Here we see a illumination level chart for a continuously dimmed closed loop system that is task tuned and shuts the area lighting off during full daylight testing or what the reference appendices refer to as bright conditions. In this case the lights are all the way off. Here's the same sort of system where the uh, illumination, uh, the luminaires simply dim down. Here's a large daylit area with closed loop task tuned continuously dimmed systems where the design illuminance has been documented. This should be virtually identical to the reference illumination, presumably. Here's a large daylit area with an open loop or closed loop continuously dimmed full output system where the design illuminance has been documented. This should be 
relatively identical to the reference illuminance. Here's the same system that puts out the lighting during the full daylight test. There is an extra test for continuously dimmed daylighting systems. This is not shown in the design section of the building energy efficiency standards. In this test, the reference illuminance is measured and then the full output, quote, highest light level foot candles, unquote, and the reference illumination must be at least 70% of the full output illuminance to pass. Yep, and there it is, shown in all of its glory, line K. We're not sure why it's there, but it's only for uh, continuously dimming systems, and it probably has to do with not overtuning the lights. Surprise! You're not allowed to task tune a daylighting system down by more than 30%, at least not the automatic lumen maintenance part that is done by a photo closed loop photo controller. Uh, if your reference illuminance is not within 30% of the sensor covered illuminance, a tech uh, should fail you on that. So watch out. If one reads 130.1D of the building energy efficiency standards, then power reduction from full lighting output to full daylight electric illumination must be at least 65%. However, the typical daylighting levels for making the full output test are shown on the acceptance testing forms. The reference appendices simply say simulate bright conditions. Shown on the acceptance testing form, a task tuned system need only achieve a 56% reduction to pass on power reduction. Surprise, surprise. Also, illumination reduction and power reduction may not be used in an interchangeable manner as they were during demand response testing. Rather, the technician has to estimate power reduction from illumination reduction if he is not measuring power reduction directly. In a daylighting system with continuously dimmed output, the combined illuminance in a daylit area should track between 100% and 150% of the reference illuminance taken during the no daylight test. For a stepped or switched system, this test is made at the points where a stage of light just snaps off or shuts off. For a stepped or switched output system, there is a requirement that there is a minimum three minute time delay between the point where the set point for a stage of lights is exceeded and when that stage steps down or switches off. Daylighting control requirements are defined by exception. Parking structures have their own criteria. So join me for our final pitfalls and bear traps section which is 07 outdoor and then we'll be done with this whole ghastly affair. Thank you for your time and patience.